A divine dragon who had lived since the age of the gods accepts his end at the hands of a human despite never having harmed them, and without any justification he asks the Shinigamis to take his soul so he can rest in peace, but by a twist of fate he is reborn as a human named Dolan in a small farming village, there he works hard every day his brother is worried because Dolan volunteered to check the swamp due to the disappearance of the lizards, after all that was the garrison's duty but Dolan reassures him as the garrison was busy defending the village which was surrounded by many monsters and bandits, he says he's only going to take a look at the swamp, and since there were few soldiers the villagers helped defend themselves together with little airy Dolan practiced magic, and the woman teaching him admitted that his offensive magic was always perfect so they should focus on magical medicines as that was what he struggled. With most in the late afternoon the village chief introduced him to Christina who would be staying in the village for a while since she was a young noblewoman the chief advised Dolan to behave properly, after they shook hands they both felt something and Dolan recognized that she seemed very skilled as he walked home to his parents he remembered how shocked he had been to discover that humans could live in such hostile climates as this village where one could freeze to death but in summer it was unbearably hot at his parents house he complimented his mother's cooking and his father mentioned that while living alone might be relaxing it could also be lonely suggesting dolan find a wife but dolan wanted to enjoy his bachelor life a little longer his brother then asked if he was really going to the swamp which dolan confirmed making his mother anxious however dolan reassured her that she need not worry as he would only check from a distance his father responded that as an adult Dolan made his own decisions, but he wanted him to return safely so. His mother wouldn't worry Dolan thanked him certain he'd return with a great story. And to hear it just subscribe otherwise the anime ends in the first episode don't forget to like and comment a lot so you don't miss the second episode but enough talk, let's get on with the anime. The captain of the soldiers offered to go with Dolan but a girl scolded him saying they would have trouble if monsters attacked while he was gone a priestess gave Dolan her blessing and his magic teacher asked him to be careful as her fortune reading showed a small sign of trouble ahead, and so Dolan set out for the swamp where the lizards who used to interact with his village lived one day they simply disappeared upon reaching the swamp he touched the water and noticed that the power of the earth elementals was very strong while the water elementals were weakening this was why the lizards couldn't live there anymore a sound alerted him as only powerful monsters could now live in the swamp a half-serpent girl called him a fool for coming alone, and Dolan noticed she was a lamia she asked if he was alone and Dolan confirmed it relieving the girl she began wondering what she should do. Perhaps she should use the seduction her mother had taught her, which made Dolan question what strange movements she was making the Lamia, said she hadn't come to fight. But a huge creature interrupted them trying to attack her Dolan saved the girl, and the two hid from the monster Dolan explained that it was a deranged earth elemental long ago some lizardmen lived there, but they disappeared and that creature might be responsible it might have appeared after a great earthquake that disturbed the elementals which could no longer return to normal he introduced himself as Dolan and the Lamia introduced herself as Selena Dolan, remembered that Lamias could use magic, and asked if they could fight together surprising Selena she reminded him that Lamias were earth creatures so her magic wouldn't be very useful but perhaps her racial spell could work Dolan offered to go ahead while she supported him Selena agreed and joke in sickness and in health till death do us part. Dolan asked if that wasn't what people said when they got married making the girl blush then the battle began Selena summoned a huge serpent that trapped the elemental, but she couldn't hold. It for long it was enough however for Dolan to imbue his sword with draconic magic, and cleave the monster in two leaving Selena covered in mud since she wasn't hurt Dolan thanked her after formally introducing themselves Dolan complimented her on her beautiful name making the girl blush. That night Selena admitted she was surprised he hadn't been afraid when he saw her Dolan replied that it was because she seemed different from the Lamias he knew who were wary of humans and aggressive he asked what she was doing there as there were no Lamia villages nearby she explained that when Alamia turned 17 she had to leave to find a husband, and that's why she was on this journey Dolan found that admirable Selena then explained that Lamias were an exclusively female race and rarely gave birth to boys who were always of their father's race Lamias were created when human woman was cursed and this curse was passed down because they were part snake their bodily fluids were venomous, so they had to choose a husband with a strong body and resistance to poison. Otherwise when they kissed or had babies they could die her mother met her father on a journey and he was also human like her, and they got along very well 
smell quite the subtle hint Dolan, but anyway Dolan replied that it was very nice making Selena question whether he was treating her like a child he denied it saying he just thought she was a very adorable Lamia making her blush she was also impressed with the taste of his cooking which he said he had learned from his mother who prepared food for the whole family to eat together around the pot on cold winter night Selena noticed how much he loved his family since he smiled gently when talking about them making Dolan remember that lonely dragon in the cave now gone and he agreed with her the next day the two said goodbye and Dolan wished her luck in finding a great partner on her journey since he heard Lamia's liked vital energy he gave her a bit which made her fall to the ground Dolan thought perhaps a dragon's energy was too strong he asked her to visit his village with her husband when her journey was over so he could introduce her to his family and Selena agreed some humans were terrified at the sight of Selena while Dolan struggled in his potion class but AIRI tried to console him as he had a sharp eye for magical herbs and was good with children not to mention his handsomeness but since her mixture had worked Mrs. Maguru sent her to go play while Dolan reflected on how clumsy he was with delicate things given his past life as dragons had no need for medicine however Maguru told him not to rush after all there were no shortcuts in life after class he had lunch with AIRI's family who prayed to the goddess Myro reminding Dolan that it had been a while since he last saw her after lunch he rushed to training running late but MIU a bovine person stopped him and offered a glass of fresh milk making Dolan remember how she shared her milk with the villagers and how delicious delicious it was. Dolan arrives at training where the children were excited but he feels the presence of a monster that night he decides to check it out since the presence felt familiar as he approaches he finds Selena cleaning herself leaving the girl embarrassed she stumbles but Dolan catches her and asks what she was doing in the village the girl tells him not to look and Dolan puzzled asks why after all she was beautiful and desiring beautiful things was. Natural instinct Selena slaps him and he apologizes. For his lack of tact after she dresses he asks again what she was doing there thinking she had gone south Selena explains that she tried to make contact with the humans though she found it terrifying but when she spoke to them they simply ran away in fear Dolan admits that he was happy to see her again and would do anything he could to help her he asks what she thought of living together which surprises her as she wonders if he's inviting her to live in his village this makes her anxious since as a monster she would probably scare everyone but Dolan responds that he has a plan and besides many beast people and semi-humans live in the village sure people might be suspicious at first because she's a Lamia, but over time with her kind personality and powers they would welcome her with open arms or presence would also make his life much more pleasant Dolan wonders why this seemed like he was courting her and Selena agrees that life with him would be fun embarrassed she admits theirs another reason she sought him out she was hoping he could share some of his life energy again which was delicious Dolan promises that once they lived together she could have as much as she wanted and shares a bit of his energy sending Selena into bliss thus he begins to explain his plan as the days passed the captain wondered why these slain animals had been appearing in the village for three days in a row along with the tracks of a giant snake not to mention the shadow half human half creature they saw the previous night which must have been a lamia a very dangerous monster. He wanted to know why she was leaving her prey a man asks if they thought an evil monster would leave an offering for them but the captain says they should form a squad to eliminate her a man requests that. Captain Balan remained calm since Lamias were very dangerous and it would be better to ask for reinforcements from the capital this makes Dolan realize that the divide between monsters and humans was greater than he thought but Maguru asks them not to panic it was clear that everyone was worried about the village but they should think carefully as she was leaving offerings for them so there must be a reason soon after AIRI arrives. Carrying the results of a divination, and Maguru says it showed that the appearance of the snake was a sign of good luck so it was best to wait and see what happens leaving Dolan relieved because now they could move to the final phase of the plan. The next day Balan gathers some villagers along with the village's main defense unit consisting of himself as Captain Mulida as Vice Captain and Leticia, considered the messenger of the goddess Myral the key to Dolan's plan. But if she judged Selena as evil everything would be lost Balan gathered the villagers for an outdoor drill which Dolan had expected now it all depended on Selena who was tense remembering the plan in which she would save Dolan as he purposely entered the burrows of the piercing rabbits this way no one would consider her a malicious monster but a soldier runs terrified out of the forest causing Dolan to wonder if he had seen Selena then he notices the presence of another monster a heavily armored bear that emerges before them the captain questions what the bear was doing in the forest and orders everyone to keep their distance however a child falls and the bear tries to attack 
attack leaving Dolan distressed, as he wouldn't escape and scathed unless he used his dragon. Powers but Selina saves them both taking the creature's blow and enraged she orders the monster back into the forest leaving everyone surprised that it obeyed her Letitia notices that this was the cursed eye ability the captain orders the Lamia to stay away from Toro and Dolan, who asks Toro to return Dolan says that she saved them, and asks the captain not to harm her, but Balan responds that Lamias are still dangerous monsters and, as the village's protector, he cannot ignore her presence Dolan, argues that he wasn't raised to be ungrateful to those who show kindness and thus he wouldn't leave Balan then asks if she was the one leaving offerings in the village which Selina confirms though she bites her tongue breaking the tense atmosphere Balan asks why she was doing this in addition to saving Toro and Dolan with her eyes closed Selina introduces herself, saying she had followed her species rules leaving her home on a journey but traveling. Alone had been harder than expected, and so, she wanted to live in the village for a while she saved the two because their families would be sad to lose them as her parents loved each other, and her father was human she had no intention of harming any human being the soldiers admit that she wasn't frightening at all, and even seemed adorable Mulida asks if Maguru's fortune reading was correct again, and when Balan asks for Letitia's opinion he notices she's crying before a light. Dolan can't believe what's happening, and Letitia announces that. She received a message from the goddess Myral shocking everyone in her divine judgment. She said that the Lamia before them was not evil, but rather a daughter of nature like them destined to live together in harmony. She approaches Selena and asks the kind Lamia to open her eyes which she had kept closed to calm their fear of her cursed eyes Selina thanks her, but ends up fainting from her injury, so they take her to the village to tend to her wound. Later Balan leads Selina to her new home where she is amazed by everything especially the fluffy cushions which Mullida says were the captain's idea Selina thanks them for such a beautiful house and Balan apologizes for pointing his weapon at her the one who saved his son, but Selina asks him to raise his head and AIRI admits that she's eager to learn more about Lamias just as Selina wants to to learn about humans Dolan welcomes. Selina to the village of Varen, leaving her emotional. Dolan is happy for the help of his friend Myrila. So that night he assumed his astral form, and with his dragon body, he flew to the realm of the gods. There Mirali was delighted to see her old dragon friend, who seemed to be adjusting to life on earth. Dolan thanks her for the divine message about the Lamia, and admits that he was impressed that she noticed he had been reborn as a human. Mirali reveals that she felt his soul among the prayers offered, shining with the joy of life, which surprised her, as he used to be tired of living. Dolan agrees and admits that when the hero's sword pierced his heart, he didn't feel despair but rather a sense of emptiness. But that changed when he was reborn as a human, making him realize that the people down below lived each day as if it were their last, their lives shining with intense brightness. Mirali responds that he too was shining brightly, and she could feel the pure joy in his heart and soul, just like the Lamia. With dawn breaking, Selina bursts into his house, overjoyed, as it was the day they would go plant potatoes with Christina. In a city, the disappearance of women was being announced, but at the Magic Institute, the headmistress Olivia received a letter from Christina talking about her days in the village of Varen, where even the villagers were receiving combat training. In one of the simulated battles, she defeated the vice-captain, who fought with all her might, leaving everyone excited. Mulida invited her to dinner with everyone, who despite living in difficult conditions, were very welcoming. Captain Balan even invited her for a drink, but Mulida told him not to drag her into his nonsense. That night, while deep in thought, she saw the captain having fun with the villagers and decided to do some training. But Selina and Dolan found her, and as she seemed sad, Selina took her to her house, which she loved. What she liked most was the bed, which was very comfortable, and she said that if Christina slept in that bed, she too would feel great happiness. But Dolan replied that although it was a great bed for Lamias, it might not be the same for humans. Still, Christina lay down on the bed and admitted that it was very comfortable, making Selina excited. She said the bed was Balan's idea, and as a Lamia, she had been worried whether the villagers would accept her. But the more she got to know the village, the more she loved its people, like Balan, who was proud of the milk his wife produced for the village and competed with the villagers to see who could drink the most. There was also Dolan's brother, a skilled fisherman who once caught a huge salmon. Dolan mentioned that the other villagers had their own quirks, like Melita, who was a soldier on the outside but loved sweets. Selina asked why he was just standing there, and Christina called him to join them and they had a lot of fun together. Before the next part, 
I'll warn you that there's going to be a really strange conversation, so be careful how you listen to it, because just the sound could seem quite questionable. Anyway, the next day Balan asked who was going to drink more of his wife's milk, him or one of the guys. He was happy that Christina had joined them, and she said she wanted to try the milk he was so proud of. She admitted it was delicious, but Balan asked if she was a big milk drinker. She replied that she could drink more than most, so she and Balan started a competition to see who could drink more of his wife's milk. This is bordering on that kind of anime, but let's continue. Balan ended up losing, and everyone celebrated with Christina, who was very happy and kept drinking her milk. Some time later, M.I.U. came to her, asking her to taste her daughter's first milk, which she wanted Balan to try, but he was exhausted. Christina said this milk was sweet and smooth and asked for another glass, making Mir very excited. Thanks to Dolan and Selena, she was able to get closer to the villagers, and the woman admitted that Christina was truly impressive for becoming friends with Alamia. During a formal dinner, people were talking about the Magic Institute student Christina, who had befriended Alamia, though they never believed humans and monsters could be friends. Kieran asked Olivia to tell her more about the Lamia, and the headmistress asked why a mage from the general government was curious about it. She replied that even though there was only one Lamia, they shouldn't dismiss her as a threat and was impressed that humans were living with such a dangerous creature. They still needed to resolve the recent disappearances. Olivia responded that while these incidents were concerning, they said the Lamia was kind and loving, and a divine message from the goddess had told them to live with her. But Kieran insisted that they should still be prepared for the worst and should summon her immediately. She asked under whose jurisdiction Varen was, and a man replied that he would send an emissary immediately. In the village, Dolan and his friends were planting potatoes when a soldier told them to go to the village gates immediately. Upon arriving, soldiers surrounded Dolan and Selina under the orders of Gouda, the northern border commissioner. He said he knew that Dolan had brought the Lamia to the sacred land given by the king. A woman said that the goddess Myral had already proven that the Lamia wasn't an evil monster, but he replied that he wasn't doubting the judgment of the great goddess Myral. However, as the one responsible for these lands, he had to eliminate any threat quickly and safely. This made Dolan wonder what they wanted, and Gouda said they would take the Lamia to the general government to confirm if she was truly harmless. Dolan asked why since they weren't doubting the goddess's judgment. Gouda replied that although the goddess might have accepted her, if she wanted to live in Varen, she needed to complete the necessary procedures required by the kingdom's law. These were the laws of society, and surely the Lamia would understand. Since Dolan had brought her, Gouda asked him to accompany her, and he agreed. Worried about them, Christina decided to go ahead and speak to the headmistress, who had some influence with the general government. She used a wind spell to speed up her journey. Meanwhile, Selina shared her blanket with Dolan, who asked her not to worry, as the procedures wouldn't take long. She admitted she was more concerned about the trouble she'd caused everyone, but Dolan pulled her close, saying that he had learned this from his mother, who always hugged him and comforted him when he felt insecure. This made Selina emotional. Dolan told her that if she ever felt bad about being a Lamia, he would give her a long lecture that would last all night. As for Christina, she finally reached the headmistress's office and asked about the commissioner's visit to the village. Olivia explained that, since they had the divine message from the goddess, Selina wouldn't be eliminated. She revealed that it wasn't Commissioner Gouda who had decided to bring her, but rather someone high-ranking, Kieran, the mage from the general government. Kieran saw the Lamia as a threat that might be involved in the recent disappearances, which Olivia thought was impossible since she was living in Varen. But if Kieran said so, suspicions could fall on her, leaving Christina worried. That night, the commissioner summoned Dolan and Selina. Dolan and Selina are caught off guard by what Gouda tells them, while the director remarks on Kieran's considerable power within the general government. This makes Christina question if there's truly nothing they can do. The director replies that any reckless actions might turn them into the accused for overstepping their bounds. Yet, there is something else she deems worse. Eventually, Dolan and Selina find Kieran, who warmly welcomes them to Galoa and invites them to dinner while Gouda takes care of the report. During the meal, Kieran requests Selina to accept it as a token of gratitude for bringing her here, and they both thank her. 
Dolan notes that regardless, Selina would have had to come to the city if she wished to keep living in the village, and Selina confesses she thought the soldiers would eliminate her, which Kieran acknowledges was a valid concern. After all, they were worried that Selina might have used her cursed eyes to manipulate the villagers. But Kieran observes that the fear was misplaced, as she would never destroy such a pure and beautiful soul. Meanwhile, Gauda meets with the director, and Christina questions what he's doing there. During the dinner, Dolan senses something, and Kieran comments that she's seen many Lamias in her life but that Selina is so beautiful she nearly wants to devour her. Both eventually faint. The director allows Gauda to explain the situation to Christina. He asks if she knew about the disappearances of women from the city, which she confirms. Gauda then reveals that a certain human mage, rumored to be over 300 years old, was living in Galoa. This alarms Christina, as living for so long would have required forbidden magic. He explains that the mage used this magic to possess the bodies of young people, and that she has taken an interest in Alamia, making Christina realize he's speaking of Kieran. Gauda asks them to follow him. Meanwhile, Kieran is thrilled, as it's been so long since she laid hands on Alamia, especially one with such lovely skin. Just as she is about to cut her, Dolan interrupts, asking how many people she had eliminated since the magical circles reeked. She replies that she stopped counting at 100, but wants to know if he's truly human, as the restraints were quite strong. Dolan then questions her about what she does with her victims. Kieran replies that everyone possesses something beautiful and that she only gathers and exchanges these parts to remain beautiful. Dolan then asks if she made a deal with a demon, since this is forbidden magic. Kieran confirms, revealing that her arm is from an arachnid, her legs from a beast woman, and her skin from an elf. It's time for a change, but Dolan is merely an ignorant fool who cannot comprehend beauty. Her research, after all, had already been recognized by powerful people, and he should feel honored she chose this girl. But Selina is appalled by the cruel things Kieran has done, to which Kieran remarks that perhaps she should strengthen the effects of her poison, as Selina also woke up. Selina, questioning how Kieran could have deceived those girls who sought her help, speaks up, yet Kieran is unmoved, remarking that those girls were bound to lives of strife and domestic drudgery, tainting their beautiful skin. Selina admits that Gauda was right about her, drawing Kieran's attention. Dolan says that the problem with scoundrels like her is that they always have loose tongues. He reveals the magical item Gauda gave them, which transmits sound, meaning he now knows all of her misdeeds. With an explosion, Christina breaks into the place along with the director and Gauda, who admits he didn't believe they'd accept the role of bait. Gauda orders the witch's arrest. The director reveals they knew Kieran intended to frame Selina for the disappearances, hoping to claim her body. Kieran questions if she truly had to hear this from those blessed with beauty, insisting they, who were born beautiful, could never understand her struggle to attain it. In her youth, she was enchanted by the beauty of the world but despaired when she realized she wasn't a part of it. In that moment, she began to make victims, building her beauty, though now a certain superior elf was scorning her efforts. She would now show them the fruits of her 300 years of research. Kieran begins transforming into a monstrous creature. Noelle identifies it as a body fusion, having likely combined parts of various species using magic. This proves she had made a pact with a demon. Kieran taunts them to admire her form, grand and lovely, composed of countless lives. She attacks the guards, but Selina uses her cursed eyes to stop her, prompting Kieran to admit it's powerful. However, Selina cannot hold on for long, and Kieran attacks, but Christina cuts off her fingers, declaring that harming her friends is a crime punishable by elimination. Kieran, however, regenerates her fingers and strikes again. Christina invokes her ability and counters the creature's attacks, angering Kieran for harming her lovely legs. She retaliates with dark magic, and Gauda admits her offensive magic is indeed impressive. The director, panicked, urges action but fears that summoning the subterranean spirits would bury everyone alive. Dolan assures her it's over, making the director wonder if he intends to use superior magic in this situation. She notices they have a second magical circle, so he plans to use a magical barrier while attacking. Dolan asks Kieran if she is pleased, but she commands him to kneel before her beauty, boasting mana beyond human limits. Yet Dolan retorts that she could never attain true beauty, for the bodies she absorbed belonged to those with hopes and dreams for the future. He activates the celestial spear along with a barrier, utterly obliterating the monster, leaving his friends worried, but he assures them all as well. After a few days, Selina grows weary from so much study. Dolan tells her this is proof she is learning and that she should now be able to express herself in the language of this land. She apologizes for him having to stay confined in the mansion with her because she used her cursed eyes, but Dolan is unbothered. Christina visits them with Director Olivia and Commissioner Gauda, who apologizes for not appearing sooner and wants to apologize again for involving them in this case. Selina asks him to hold his head high, and Dolan admits he was surprised when he suggested acting as bait for the investigation. Thanks to his tutor's antidote, the poison's effects were neutralized immediately. Gauda admits it's pathetic that the general government has criminal mages. He wishes to hand over the registry and authorization for Selina to stay in Galoa, making her very happy. Gauda acknowledges that they knew she was a kind soul and again apologizes for making her wait so long, prompting her to confess he is quite different from her first impression of him. Olivia leads them to Denzel, 
who is delighted to reunite with Dolan and says that his mother, Dolan's mentor, often spoke of Selena in her letters. Since they are here, he invites them to tour the place, leaving Selena marveling at everything. When she tries to return a fruit a child dropped, the boy's mother is terrified at seeing Alamia, and the townspeople begin to murmur about her, making Dolan uneasy. Selena suggests they buy gifts for the villagers. Later, Dolan thanks them for everything and asks Denzel to return to Varen someday. Denzel asks if Dolan would consider joining the Institute, as he and the director could see his magical powers are extraordinary and would be ashamed to leave them unused. Dolan thanks him for the invitation but is occupied with matters in the village. Denzel understands but suggests he think about it. Olivia speaks of his spirit and says that if he wishes to help people, he should expand his knowledge at the Institute. Denzel adds that if he wants to protect his beloved village, leaving it might be one way. This saddens Selena, but after bidding farewell, they continue their journey. Christina asks if he's considering what the director said, and Dolan confirms, as learning magic at the Institute would be interesting, though he feels there's still much to do in the village. Christina notes his love for the village and offers that, as they are of similar age, he may call her Chris. However, despite the village's warmth, what he could learn there is limited, and the Institute could provide him with new experiences. This leaves Dolan thoughtful, and Selena worried, while elsewhere, a portal summons several giant ants. The monsters attack the elves, taking down many of them, and one of the elves warns the newcomers that a horde of demons caused this. Meanwhile in the village, Selena watches Dolan and Chris teaching the children, remembering the invitation Dolan received to study at the institute. She wonders if he would leave her behind, but soon she starts running after the children, making Dolan confess he was happy Selena had become part of the village. Then Chris tells him she wants to explore the forest, as she heard there are fierce animals in the region and she could test her skills against them. However, Dolan warns her that the forest is dangerous and not worth venturing into without reason. She responds that she has a reason, as Albert mentioned he couldn't get the pigs to graze. If they took them into the forest, they might find their favorite acorns while protecting them, which was reason enough to help the village, a motive Dolan agrees with. And of course, I couldn't miss the chance to invite you to subscribe, so come join our community. Don't forget to like and comment so you're up to date with new episodes. With that, let's get back to the anime. Selena notices everyone in full armor, and Dolan explains it's because of sightings of unusual beasts. The captain warns the soldiers to stay alert, but one follows a stray pig and is startled to see it thrown aside. What truly terrifies him is the appearance of a tiger with blades, but the captain saves him, snapping him back to attention. Then, a demon attacks, and its cries alert Dolan and his group, who find Balan wounded. He collapses, and Dolan strikes the monster, leaving Chris curious about the creature. Dolan explains they aren't just monsters but residents of the demon kingdom, a lower demon acting as a scout, known as ZRTS. Though it's of the lowest rank, it's still very powerful, so he will immobilize it for Chris to eliminate. She agrees with his plan, and Dolan attacks with his magic before Chris finishes it off. Dolan asks her not to inform the villagers about the demons. Later that night, the elder assures them Balan is out of danger. The villagers are troubled by an unknown monster harming Balan, and the elder notes it's the first time he's heard of such a thing, which is alarming, as Balan is the strongest soldier yet was gravely wounded by this monster. This makes Dolan wonder what is happening in the forest, it was already rare to encounter a bladed tiger, but this demon poses an even greater threat. Mrs. Maguru adds that Balan wasn't injured by the bladed tiger but by something more powerful, prompting Dolan to volunteer to investigate the forest. Maguru responds that they must learn to live with this, as this is life on the border, where they coexist with nature and ultimately return to it. But Dolan argues that challenging nature is also part of being human, causing his mentor to yield, though she doesn't want him to go alone. Chris offers to accompany him, but the elder intervenes, as they promised Gauda to keep her safe. Then Selina volunteers, saying her cursed eyes and magic could be helpful, and Dolan agrees. He says that as this is their village, they will resolve the issue, and the elder asks them to prioritize their lives. The next day, Dolan and Selina set off into the forest, with Selina trying to hide her happiness at being alone with him. She promises she won't be a burden, but soon they come across Chris, who tells them she's out for a walk in the forest. They then engage in battle against some spiders, while Dolan recalls a conversation in which he assumed she had accepted the elder's decision. But Chris responds that he mentioned resolving their village's problem, and Varen village had become a place she cared about, so she wanted to help the people she held dear. This makes Selena admit she feels the same, the village's troubles are now her own. During the fight, Dolan reflects on how more people are showing concern for the area, wondering if this is a human feeling, and if so, he himself might be becoming more human. After defeating all the spiders, Chris warns of a massive monster, but Selena offers it an apple, saying it's apologizing for scaring them. Chris admits she's never seen such a gentle monster, feeling puzzled when she sees Dolan holding its babies. They all begin to eat, and Chris asks if they're not afraid of monsters, to which Selena reminds her that she too is a monster a fact she had forgotten. Selena adds that if everyone were like her, it would be wonderful. Chris then decides to offer an apple to one of the monster's young, managing to pet it, and Selena explains that they were hungry and attacked because they couldn't find food. 
Dolan suggests the same might have happened with the spiders, powerful monsters expelled from their feeding grounds. As they talk, Chris enjoys her meal, making Selena confess that seeing her like this is fascinating. Dolan agrees, saying she has a mysterious charm, as if she stepped out of a work of art, leaving Chris embarrassed. Selena asks her to reveal the secret of her charm, as it might become a powerful asset in finding a husband. But Dolan insists she doesn't need that, as she's perfect as she is, making Selena wonder if he's saying she has enough charm already, that she need not look for a husband, as he would take her as his wife. Though he's never shown such feelings, she doesn't know how to respond to this proposition. Something then catches their attention, and from the forest emerges an orb containing a fairy who tells them to flee. Soon, several ZRTS demons appear, and Dolan and Chris begin to fight. Dolan saves Selena, and as he faces one demon, another hidden one lunges at him. Dolan strikes one with his sword and holds back the other. He apologizes to his parents, who gave him this body, as he transforms his arm into a dragon's arm, crushing the demon. Selena saves Chris, who is nearly struck from behind. They then speak with a fairy, who thanks them for helping her, surprised to see humans with a lamia. The fairy introduces herself as M-A-R-L, saying those demon soldiers suddenly began pursuing her. Dolan suggests those troops may be responsible for the forest's change, remembering that ZRTS are mere scouts, so more powerful demons might be arriving. Chris asks if Marl could offer information since they are investigating the forest's changes, and she replies that they face many troubles, appreciating their offer. This draws Selena's attention as she and Dolan realize they are surrounded. Dolan stops Chris from drawing her sword, noting that they are watching with caution, not hostility. So Dolan places his sword on the ground, Selena closes her eyes, and Chris also places her sword down, causing the elves to emerge, and the one who appears to be the leader tells Marl to step away from them. Finishing the fifth episode, thank you so much to those who stayed until the end. Don't forget to support with your like, subscription, and sharing. Thanks, and see you next time.